I've been reading Quran in this last Ramadan and I've came up with these four storytelling techniques that God used in his book and I'm pretty sure they will help you as an influencer and a storyteller. And so let's get started. And the first technique is repetition. As Prophet Muhammad said, God has a hundred and twenty-four thousand forfeits but he only mentioned twenty-five of them in the Quran and he kept repeating those same stories throughout the whole book and now I think of why God used repetition it just makes it stick right let's take one of the best influencers out there as an example Hamza who got like millions of young men into improving themselves as I've seen from his videos he kind of focused on just one story he was partying and having fun, getting girls and living the best life that every young man at this time wishes to have. But then he got to a 9 to 5 job and ended up depressed, wanting to suicide every single day. And he kept repeating that same story a lot of times throughout his videos. And so not even he got better at telling that same story. Every time he repeats it, it just sticks right. And I was one of the people that resonated with his story and realized that chasing girls is not gonna get me anywhere. And so I started my self-improvement. I go back to praying and I'm here making this video for you just because Hamza used this technique in his videos. So make sure that you pick a few stories that you could just repeat. But when repeating your stories, you don't just wanna be copy pasting them from like script to another script, right? You don't wanna be copying them word by word, verb by verb sentence by sentence on every single video or presentation that you're trying to do that wouldn't really work you gotta always change it depending on the topic that you're talking about let me give you an example the most mentioned story in islam is the story of forfeit musa and pharaoh who's like the king of old egypt if you don't know and i highly suggest that you watch that story at least on youtube because it's gonna teach you a lot of lessons especially about ego and patience and not being grateful and this story has been repeated I, I don't know the exact number I'll probably put it there after editing but it's not the same story right God didn't just copy it and paste it in another surah every time he mentions it he adds a new detail he mentions another part of the story that we didn't know in the first version he narrates this story from another person point of view it just changes right even though he kept repeating it like a lot of times but you never get bored from it it's always a new detail it's always a new lesson it's always new verbs and sentences i've asked my islamic teen studies teacher in high school about this who's basically an imam so he should know a lot about this stuff and he said it's kind of like a camera right you someone shoot it from this angle and then you shoot it from this angle and then you shoot it from this angle it changes right that what God is doing on every single story. He doesn't just give you one single point of view and keep repeating it. It's always different, bro. It's like that Google Map 360 degree camera, bro. It's always a different version of it. SubhanAllah. Let me give you an example from my own experience. The story that I'm gonna tell of how I got ripped and made muscle is almost the same story of how I lost weight and cured my binge eating problems. But I'm not gonna be mentioning the same details. For example, here I wouldn't focus on the details to show you how I lost weight. And here I wouldn't focus on the details of how I build muscle. And here I wouldn't mention my binge eating problems. And here I wouldn't mention that I was inconsistent with my workouts. And so you get the point, right? It's the same story, but you change the details every time you tell it. So people don't get bored and make it flow with the topic that you're talking about like exactly how God is doing in every single surah he changes his stories so they can flow better with the other surahs and the second technique used in Quran is telling stories at a fast pace bro now this is kind of funny right it's like God have already predicted that we're gonna have a bad attention spam thousands of years ago because let's be honest you probably just grabbed your phone while you're watching this video don't lie to me and you probably scroll through the comments now so you can get that dopamine reward so you can watch the video even though you might have above average attention spam if you're watching this kind of videos because let's be honest those guys that are scrolling through tiktok are not going to be watching these kind of videos and so to grab our attention when telling stories, God just goes through these stories at a fast pace, bro. It's like event, 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 event. And trust me, 
God can mention every single detail. He knows everything. But he didn't mention so much details. He's just gone through it. When I was young, before I was reading Quran and everything, I was watching this series of like Forfeit Yusuf. And the series is pretty long, right? It's about 40 episodes and each episode lasted around an hour or something. And so that's almost 40 hours worth of content. And when I started reading Quran this last Ramadan and I've stumbled on Forfeit Yusuf's story, and you know how it took me to read? Five minutes. Think of it. A whole story of a forfeit that those guys are making 50 hours worth of content of that story. And I'm reading it in like five minutes. Subhanallah, he just goes through them so quickly that you can't just lose attention and draft away while reading the stories. You might draft away in other parts of Quran and like start getting some thoughts, right? But I tell you from experience, bro, every time God mentions a story in the Quran, I never lose attention. Even in my prayers, bro, when the Imam is like reciting Quran, but for example, it's like a part of Forfeit Yusuf's story. And while he's reciting, I always keep my attention on it. I never draft away. I never got those random thoughts while praying. I just keep my full attention on the Quran that he's reciting. But when he's like reciting some other part of Quran, which doesn't include stories, I easily draft away. So that was like a special technique that God used. Just make your stories as fast as possible. And you probably should already know this if you're like in the social media space. Because as I said, everyone now has like minus five attention span. And to help make the stories fast paced, God uses some simple verbs and short phrases compared to like the rest of Quran where he's not telling stories. He will use those complicated words for me at least because I'm not that deep into Arabic and like some long phrases and other parts of Quran. But when he's telling stories, it's the simplest and shortest sentences that you could ever use. Even in seven years old can read a story in Quran and understand most of it. Download the Surah of Yusuf, an English version if you want to go through the story of Prophet Yusuf and discover some other techniques that I didn't discover if you want. And so best case scenario, you want to be writing those short stories, right, that you used to read when you were a child, even though you had like some bad attention spam, but you still kept your attention on them because they were five minutes worth of content and they are pretty simple to read through. And don't use those complicated phrases and words like you see in politics or like fiction writers. Because let's be honest, you don't remember what politicians are saying, right? You don't even pay attention to them because they are too boring. And I might cut this part of the video because it got really dangerous. <laughs> and this is something that I'm still struggling with. You probably noticed that the stories that I've just told you are not that shortened, right? But again, practice is one of the keys to be a storyteller. Boss, you gotta know the things that you need to improve before trying to improve. It's like going to the gym and doing some random exercises and then you wonder why you have a huge back and a small chest. <laughs> you gotta know the exercise and what muscle it targets and then practice the exercises so you can get better. And that's the same thing, so let's get to the third point, which is tell these stories that we need now. If you didn't know, Quran didn't just come into one single dose to forfeit Muhammad. It was given to him like verse by verse, verse by verse, verse by verse for around 23 years. This was one of the most important techniques that made Quran more influential. That's why God accepted it as a final religion for us. As we believe at least. And let me give you an example. There is a time when Prophet Muhammad was kind of feeling down in life. He gone through some depressive things and I don't want to get into the details because I don't know them myself. And to conclude it, he was just feeling anxious and impatient to share the message of Islam and Quran. And so in that moment where Prophet Muhammad was kind of feeling down, God gave him the surah of Yusuf that I've just talked about, which mentioned how like the father of Yusuf, which is forfeit Yaqub, waited for his son to come back around 50 years. Like it might scale more because I don't know the ages at that time. But from what I've seen, it's around 40 to 50 years in our like time and everything. Imagine just sitting there for 50 years and the only thing that you do is look at the sky, pray to God to give me my son back who like went to Egypt after some events. And after those 50 years, he got to Egypt and finally saw his son. And you could watch that story if you want to know more. 
So God kind of gave motivation to forfeit Muhammad. He's telling them that forfeit Yaqub just waited for 50 years and you can't wait for a decade or something. Which was super relatable for the situation that forfeit Muhammad was in. Sharing Islam was his most precious thing and he was waiting for it. But he kind of told him, do not worry, Islam will get shared at some point, 15 years later, 1000 years later. And so what? It's gonna be shared, so don't be depressed. And so you see what God did there, he gave him a story that is super relatable to his situation right now, just to give him motivation. And same thing when like the code of Forfeit Muhammad was like being tortured by their enemies, literally some hard torture. And at that time, God gave to Forfeit Muhammad some stories that will help get them up, be motivated again, even though they were suffering. He gave them the story of Nuh, who stayed like 950 years trying to convince his tribe to believe in God and worship him, but they didn't. And you know for a fact that he went through some suffering. But 950 years later, God like just gave them a huge tsunami and drowned them, literally drowned his whole tribe in water. But before that, God told Forfeit Noah to build a ship, literally it was like the first ship ever built in the world because God told him to do it. And he already told his people that this tsunami or thing is happening and they're gonna get thrown so believe in God and get into that ship with me. But they didn't and made fun of him. But now God saved him from them and the guys that believed in God with Forfeit Noah. And that's the same thing that happened with like the cult of Forfeit Muhammad. After they kept suffering and everything, they migrated to another city and they shared Islam more and things started to go well again. And so that story and a couple other stories were super relatable at that single moment where like Forfeit Muhammad and his friends were suffering but God still gave them hope because all Forfeits gone through that suffering and they finally got to a solution at the end of it. They always took the W and you can try to do the same thing just ask is this story really what we need now and the same topic in this couple of phrases and these current circumstances will this story help people or not now this might sound really simple right it takes like five iq to realize this but i'll tell you for sure the times that i've told some unnecessary stories in my videos are insane and it probably ruined my retention on youtube and everything and just made my videos longer and so probably no one kept his attention on it and the fourth technique is having so much stories to choose from now this might sound opposite to the first point that i've talked about it's like to choose a small amount of stories and keep repeating them in a different way every single time you mention them but as i said god had a hundred and 24,000 forfeits which probably everyone had like some interesting stories that we could all learn from but God doesn't just know forfeit stories. He knows what's happening now, what happened before, and what's gonna happen later on, and what might happen now, what might have happened before, and what might will happen later on. So we're talking about thousands of multiverses. And to simplify it for you, God knows everything. And so you know that he shows the best stories that he could share with us because he had infinite amount of options to pick from and we gotta do the same thing we gotta know as much stories as we could possibly know if you want to be a good storyteller and not just stop having stories because you're too busy telling the last stories that you've just experienced you want to keep like stories flowing and everything and how i'm personally doing this is to make sure that i'm socializing almost every single day but you gotta socialize with the right people right you don't want to be socializing with those low value friends that are telling you how good the last night party was bro you probably know them right you know those friends but i guarantee you talking to them wouldn't get you any stories that you could actually share you want to be talking to the right people that have the same values and interests as you so you can share those experiences with each other and to do this just join discord servers with people that got your same interest. If you're on self-improvement, join a self-improvement Discord server. If you're obsessing about stoicism, join a stoicism Discord server and talk to someone there. Literally, it's that simple. It might sound cringe and awkward, 
But it's that simple to find the right people that will give you more experiences and help you grow more. And you probably just got the thought of that single community that you should join and share for a friend there. And so just do it, bro. What are you waiting for? Click off this video and do it. I'm waiting here. All right, you've done that. Let's continue. And the second thing, you want to be consuming the right content, right? Like books and podcasts and like some noticeable people, right? You don't want to be watching Logan Paul's videos because they are entertainment, bro. Shut up. You want to be watching noticeable people and get some stories and experiences from them and share them with people if you're trying to be an influencer. Because where do you think I've came up with these stories? From Quran and Imams who like knows the religion really well and everything. And so I'm learning those stories and experiences from those nojbo people and I'm sharing it to you. Duh. It's as simple as that. <laughs> so you get it? You gotta keep the stories flowing in so you can pick the best out of them and tell them to your audience. And if you want to learn more of my experience about storytelling, you can check my self-improvement coaching app linked it in the description. And as always, there's no time when you really take action.